Welcome to Jumsford's Methodist service this morning, the 24th of January 2021. My name's Mike Fogg and I'm one of the intrepid band of local preachers who travel around the circuit delivering services. This morning our service is going to be an upside down service because we're going to start with prayers of intercession and we're going to finish with a great hymn of praise. Along the way, well, along the way we're going to experience the Passover. We're going to go through the night of doubt and sorrow. And we're going to see how God called a great resistance leader to rid the land of a terrible, terrible band of raiders. Towards the end, we'll examine how we might be called to help to work for God. And then the final thing will be a tremendous hymn of praise with a cast of thousands. Well, I exaggerate by one or two. So that's the shape of our service. Let's start with our prayers of intercession. Our prayers of intercession this morning are going to be accompanied on the cello by Stephen Sharp Nelson and they're set against the background of a video of the River Crouch at South Woodham Ferrers at high tide. Well you couldn't start anywhere better could you? We pray for those who live alone. We pray for those who live in fear. We pray for those without a home. And we pray for those in need. Our prayers go out to old and young. We pray for Prince and Pauper too. Our prayers extend the hand of God to a world in need, so much in need. We pray for prisoners everywhere, those kept behind walls of stone, and those locked within their minds alone. We pray for release and air and life. Tragedy is ever near. We fear for those in Covid wards, in sweet shops even in this land, exploited for the goods we crave. We recall your servants of the past, the liberating acts of Moses and Gideon, Corrie ten Boon and others in recent past, who stood out and didn't count the cost. Father God, we are your hands, we are your feet. Use us to work for those we meet along life's way. Make us aware of help we can give and through us make your spirit live. Sometimes things feel pretty dark, don't they? We can stand on the side of a river and we can't think of a way to cross it. Days at home seem endless because we can't have friends around for tea and coffee and cake. We're not allowed to visit our children or our grandchildren on their birthdays. And we may have friends and family in hospital or in a care home 
and we can't go and give them that hug that we really want to give them. Problems have faced Christian folk over many centuries and problems faced the Jewish nation many times before that. Take the Israelites in Egypt. They'd been welcomed in uh, from a famine. They were destitute. They were refugees. But over the years the Egyptians came to see them as, well, different and as, well, a threat. And so, as time passed, the Israelites went from being refugees to being forced into slavery. But God didn't leave them there. God saw Moses and saw he could use Moses as, as the, the main man to get people out of Egypt. But when God approached Moses, he said, well, I'm not up to the job. But of course, with God's help, he was. And the people came out of Egypt. And on their last night there, they had a celebration called the Passover. We're going to see that celebration performed um, in the form of a musical. It's a musical by Roger Jones and the song that we're going to hear is called When I See the Blood I Will Pass Over You. The words really are based on Exodus chapter 12 verses 1 to 14. Um, I like this song a lot and uh, it will go round in your head for the rest of the day I'm sure. So let's hear this song performed for us. time to eat. Is everyone ready? Yes, everyone. All of us, every family, we're all waiting. We're all going to eat herbs, lamb and unleavened bread. Thousands of us waiting behind bloody doors, listening for death to pass by.
A marvellous song, I'm sure you will agree. Now it's time we all had a chance to sing. And Eddie and Jane Cook are going to lead us in a song that remembers the journey that the Israelites had through the wilderness. It's called Through the Night of Doubt and Sorrow. It's one I remember playing the recorder to as a child in junior school, um, but it's not found its way into our current hymn book. So, Through the Night of Doubt and Sorrow. tells us how God helped his people go through the worst of times. Journey, journeying from slavery through the wilderness to reach the promised land. And it might feel like it's the night of doubt and sorrow for us at the moment. But God will see us through, whether it's over a river whether it's through the illness or whether it's through the problem of being alone at home. I'd like to move on to uh, another reading now. Um, this time it's an Old Testament reading about Gideon, one of my favourite characters in the Old Testament. It's from Judges chapter 6 verses 11 to 18. Gail is going to read to us from Winding Quest which calls itself the heart of the Old Testament in plain English. It's a paraphrase of the Old Testament and it's written by Alan T. Dale and it was released, uh, published many years ago. At Ophrah in the Jezreel Plain there was an oak tree. It belonged to a man called Joash whose son was called Gideon. The Midianites, who were camel riding nomads from the desert, were raiding the Hebrew villagers. Gideon was threshing wheat, but not openly on the village threshing floor. 
he was beating a few sheaves of wheat down on the floor of the wine press to keep it out of sight of the raiders. God's messengers came down and sat down under a tree. God is with you, brave hero, he said. Well then tell me, said Gideon, if God's on our side, where's there been all this raiding? God turned to him. You're a leader, said God. Go and rescue your fellow countrymen from the raiders. Am I not sending you? Tell me, sir, said Gideon, how can I rescue my fellow countrymen? We're the poorest clan in Manasseh, and I carry no influence at all in my clan. I will be on your side, said God. You shall wipe out the raiders to the last man. Well, don't go away, I beg you, said Gideon. Wait here till I come back with my present for you. I'll stay till you come back, he said. Gideon went inside. He prepared a kid and made unleavened cakes with some flour. He put the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot. He brought them back to the oak tree and offered his present to his visitor. God's messenger lifted his staff and touched the meat and the cakes. A flash of fire from the rock burned them all up. Gideon then knew for certain that he was God's messenger. Oh God, he said, I've seen you face to face. I'm a doomed man. You are quite safe, said God. Don't panic. You won't die. Now the Midianites were the cruelest of cruel people. And again, the Hebrews were in the worst of times. For the Midianites actively tried to starve them out of their own land. And they supplanted the worship of God with the worship of Baal. And there was a statue in, in the town where, where Gideon lived. So God our Father sent an angel to see Gideon. And when the angel arrives and he says to Gideon, I want you to be a mighty resistance leader. Gideon says, well, nobody will listen to me. I'm from a small tribe, a half tribe. But of course, with the angel's help, Gideon clears out the land of the Midianites. And that's the story in Judges chapter 7 and chapter 8. Do you notice a common theme here? Moses says he's not up to the job. Gideon says, nobody will listen to me. Yet, in both cases, God our Father supports them and they are both extremely successful in what they do. I love the, the term winding quest. Think of the long and winding road in the Beatles song. That describes the Old Testament to me in a nutshell. And I like the phrase that Alan Dow uses to describe and describe that conversation that God had with Gideon. Because Gideon thought he was doomed. Because he's seen God. And of course God says to him, don't panic. You won't die. Now, I seem to remember that in a British situation comedy, there was a character who said don't panic quite a few times. At the moment it's eluding me. And so what about you? And what about me? Are we up to the job? Or will we, like Corporal Jones, say that we're going to panic? I know he actually said, don't panic. But of course, every time he did panic. Now let me say that panicking as an initial response to a call for help from God is fine. You're realising who's called you and you're realising what you've been asked to do. And panicking is actually fine for an, an initial reaction. Perhaps you think I couldn't do that. But it's our next reaction. A measured reaction. The, to the suggestion from God. That's the one that counts. 
as we realised, well, well, yes, we could actually do that. Now, I have to confess, I don't know what those jobs are, or when you'll be, will be called. But what I do know is that we will be called to God, to work for God at some stage, and that there is no better time to be called to work for God than today. There is so much to be done. We don't face the Egyptians or the Midianites, but we do face a pandemic and a nation that seems to be turning away from God. Now for the sake of safety and for the common good, we stopped meeting physically to worship. But this doesn't mean that we can stop worshipping God. It doesn't mean that we stop working for God. It doesn't mean that we stop working for our communities. We all have abilities and resources. So, imagine for a second that you're in the kitchen and you're pouring that well-earned cup of tea. I'm ready for that actually at this stage. And all of a sudden, an angel of the Lord comes down and stands there. And he says to you, we need your help. Are you going to say, I'm not up to the job. I'm too old. I'm too poor. And anyway, I don't have the skills. I do not have the wherewithal. Well, now remember that when we work for God, we don't need the wherewithal. Because God's got that. In Thessalonians, Paul writes about this and he says that God has the wherewithal and he uses the words hupa ek perisio. And that means quite beyond all measure. And this is the wherewithal that God has to support us when he asks us to work for him. So I pray this week that if the messenger comes to you, maybe it's that quiet, small voice while you're doing the washing up or whatever, that you'll respond and you'll act for him. Now I started this service with the intercessions and the focus on those who were suffering at this time. That's the opposite of what local preacher training taught me. However today of course I believe we're in the opposite of times and however you look at it our normal world has been turned upside down inside out. So perhaps that's okay to do things a different way. I'd like you to be on the lookout for God's messenger and also be sure that we have a God we can depend on. A God who is reliable and a God who will not leave us whatever we have to face and wherever we have to go. This is the God that sent Moses the God that sent Gideon, and the God that sent his son, Jesus Christ, to save us. Our final hymn is a recording that's made during the pandemic of 2020. It appears to have a cast of thousands, but ah, that's my exaggeration. And I believe recordings like this or become a whole new genre in the future because everybody can participate and we can use technology to allow everyone to participate 
in songs and music. Now before the music starts, we're going to fade in and out two slides. And these slides have images on them of people who help us. I'd like you to look at the slides and think how you can help those people on the slides. It's a great hymn. I'm not going to tell you the name of the hymn. You'll know it the minute the music starts. So enjoy the slides and enjoy the hymn. So the message I'd like you to take away from this morning is that even though you may feel that you're going through the night of doubt and sorrow, God is there for us and God will be there for us and we need not fear. Let's close by saying the grace together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.